I'd like to sing a song about spring and about one of the many delightful pastimes which we enjoy in the United States. Spring is here, a suffering is here. Life is skittles and life is beer. I think the loveliest time of the year is the spring. I do, don't you? Of course you do. But there's one thing that makes spring complete for me and makes every Sunday a treat for me. All the world seems in tune on a spring afternoon when we're poisoning pigeons in the park. <laughs> Every Sunday you'll see my sweetheart and me as we poison the pigeons in the park. When they see us coming, the birdies all try and hide, but they still go for peanuts when coated with a cyanide. The sun's shining bright, everything seems all right when we're poisoning pigeons in the park. gained notoriety and caused much anxiety in the Audubon Society with our gains. They call it impiety and lack of propriety and quite a variety of unpleasant names. But it's not against any religion to want to dispose of a pigeon. So Sunday you're free, why don't you come with me and we'll poison the pigeons in the park. And maybe we'll do in a squirrel or two while we're poisoning pigeons in the park. We'll murder them all amid laughter and merriment, except for the few we take home to experiment. My pulse will be quickening with each drop of strychnine we feed to a pigeon. It just takes a smidgen to poison a pigeon in the park. This is a song that some of the boys will have sung to their mothers as they will have gone bravely off to World War III. There's one reference in here that I should explain. There is a reference to our leading television news commentators, Chet Huntley and David Brinkley. I feel that this is appropriate because, as you know, World War III will be the first world war to be seen on television. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I certainly hope that we all have color television by then. <laughs> to drop the bomb, so don't wait up for me. But while you swelter down there in your shelter, you can watch me on your TV. While we're attacking frontally, watch Brinkley and Huntley describing contrapuntally the cities we have lost. No need for you to miss a minute of the agonizing Holocaust. Yeah! Little Johnny Jones, he was a U.S. pilot, and no shrinking violet was he. He was mighty proud when World War III was declared. He wasn't scared, no siree. And this is what he said on his way to Armageddon. So long, Mom, I'm off to drop the bomb, so don't wait up. I'll come back to my home, although it may be a pile of debris. Remember, Mommy, I'm off to get a commie, so send me a salami and try to smile somehow. I'll look for you when the war is over, an hour and a half from now. The American press reported that China had exploded a nuclear bomb. Now, this was a great leap forward for China, of course, but it was an even greater leap forward for the American press because for the first time they called it China instead of Red China. For 18 years they've been hoping it would just go away. Uh, and for the first time they called it a bomb instead of a device. <laughs> so, with China possessing the bomb, it makes us wonder who's next.
First we got the bomb, and that was good, cause we love peace and motherhood. Then Russia got the bomb, but that's okay, cause the balance of power is maintained that way. Who's next? France got the bomb, but don't you grieve, cause they're on our side, I believe. China got the bomb, but have no fears, they can't wipe us out for at least five years. Who's next? Then Indonesia claimed that they were going to get one any day. South Africa wants two, that's right. One for the black and one for the white. Who's next? Egypt's gonna get one too, just to use on you know who. So Israel's getting. Tense, wants one in self-defense. The Lord is our shepherd, says the psalm. But just in case, we better get a bomb. <laughs> Who's the next? A Luxembourg is next to go. And who knows, maybe Monaco. We'll try to stay serene and calm when Alabama gets the bomb. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and acetine, and radium, and gold, protoactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, uranium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and business, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. I left out one, actually. A new one was discovered since the song was written. It's called Laurentium. So uh, those of you who are taking notes can write it down in your programs. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium, fluorine and cherbium and manganese and reckonine and lindenite, magnesium, and discosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead, praseodymium and platinum, plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium, and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium, and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's gold and californium and fermium and berkelium and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium and argon, kryptonium, rhinon, zinc, nonsense, and rhodium and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. And there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. <laughs> Thank you. You may be interested to know that there is an older, much earlier version of that song, which is due to Aristotle, and which goes like this. There's earth and air and fire and water. 